Oh my god. Good gosh. time crew. Good time crew. She didn't even know that the video started. <laughs> this is the beginning, right? This is the intro, well, right? Welcome in. Alright, so okay. Hey, we are we're doing another one of these things, you know what I mean? This yes. is one of them things, you know what I'm saying? One of them things. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> Two of them things. Two of them things. This is uh, three of those things, actually, in this video. Oh, yeah, there's three. That uh, maybe, you know, you guys have asked us to get to, and we've been making to get to it. The list is long. I mean, I it's know. like a CBS receipt when you look at that list. Like, there's so <clears> many. <throat> yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yes. But thank you for leaving those requests. Continue to leave those down in the comment section. Absolutely. Now, so, now, 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 we gotta, we, get started. we gotta ask you a question. We got a question for you. Yeah. It's a warm one. <laughs> so, name something that did not work on your very first car. Because usually, most people's first car is not, you know, the very best. So, what's something that didn't work on your first car? Or what? multiple things. Or multiple <laughs> things. Like, what things didn't work? Yeah. Because definitely on my 90 whatever Dodge Neon, not the fast one, not the SRT, just the regular Neon. Uh, the clutch was burnt out when I first bought it. The radio didn't work. The air conditioning didn't work. It had a nice radio too, touchscreen and everything. Et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera, et cetera, touchscreen and everything just didn't work. <laughs> air conditioning, you turn it on, it's like, I feel a little bit of something. I think it, it's not cold. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the, the funniest thing was the gas gauge didn't work. So literally, I would be at the pump and I would sit there and multiply the miles per gallon <laughs> times how many gallons I put in and then I would reset the trip. So I know if I get close to like, I don't know if I put, they say I had 250 miles. I'm like, all right, when I get to like 230, I need to go get gas. Mm -hmm. right, you, you're going to run out of gas. Be like, That's I, why you have to reset well, I can't the tell because it just ain't empty all the time. <laughs> it was like below empty. It was forever empty. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's know in the comments something was broken on your first car. <laughs> Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion, and uh, I gotta get rid of them, man. I gotta admit to you. I'm fine. I'm spending too much money on clothes, hanging out with them. I gotta like fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. It's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. <laughs> all brand new shit. So when I show up with my white version of brand new, which is you know, I basically I ironed the shit, right? I ironed it, right? It's new. They just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got like fucking 58 pairs of sneakers. <laughs> Ever noticed that shit? Like every color fucking Timberland. Oh, I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a rule or something. Gotta be fresh. They're the worst. Even when you wear some new shit, there's like some sort of rule that you gotta like space out the amount of time with, within which like that you wear it. <laughs> Because God yeah. forbid you wear the same shirt within a 10-day period, one of them's going to notice. <laughs> All of a sudden just look at you funny like, this motherfucker's got the same shit he had on last Tuesday. <laughs> and then the whole car's like, oh, shit. <laughs> then everybody just starts making fun of your fucking clothes. <laughs> First they do the math, like, what was that, five days ago? Five days, this motherfucker got five shirts. <laughs> he got five shirts. <laughs> Start breaking it down. Yo, his first shirt be saying Monday. Next shit be saying Tuesday. <laughs> On the weekend, he ain't be wearing no shirt. That's true. I'll tell you, it's actually funny. You know what? That's actually how uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like all black people scared me. Mm -hmm. I was like the typical white dude from like the suburbs. You know what I mean? I had no frame of reference. You know, so my only frame of reference with black people was like those. Remember those early '90s gangster rap videos? Throw the fucking LA riots in there, man. It's fucking horrible PR. <laughs> PR. <laughs> I'm watching the videos. Look, he's got a nice car. He's got all the women, and he's still fucking mad. <laughs> <laughs> These black dudes are never happy. <laughs> <laughs> but after ten years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Whether well, black dude scares me now. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> Cause they don't care no. about anything. <laughs> the last shit that they're gonna let go, the immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. <laughs> Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! <laughs> Everyone starts making fun of him. 
he's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. <laughs> I'm not saying something's going to happen. I'm just saying, I'm paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been seeing this girl recently. Uh, it's a black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know? Gone out like three, four times, you know? First time we hung out, we hung out in like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. Uh, <laughs> so shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like Midtown, you know? Then the third time, she called me at like 3.30 in the morning, and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> yeah, cause you know the deal, right? Basically a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th street, you know what I'm saying? The second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st street, start getting like a little asthma, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. It's starting to get a little high up here. <laughs> <laughs> you feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? 106th Street, you're like leaning on shit. Like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? <laughs> there's no taxis up here. <laughs> dude, what's a bodega? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Let's get, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so I'm praying to God she's going to tell me Take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she goes, no, man, you want to get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you want to get off at 125th Street. I'm like, ah, fuck, 125th Street. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's like right in the middle of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be surrounded on all four sides. I can't fucking do this. So, at this point, I'm really trying to hide, like, the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to ask for really specific directions for when I get up there, because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down, and every other street up there is named after, like, a black leader, you know? She's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, take a right on Frederick Douglass, I'm like, God, fuck Adam Clayton! <laughs> <laughs> now, Joe, go on the internet, look up Adam Clayton! <laughs> Did he kill a bunch of white people during a slave revolt? <laughs> Fuck this shit. <laughs> so at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? <laughs> Just relax. Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? So as always, I listen to my dick. <clears throat> oh yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like five or four in the morning, right? I'm staying on like Malcolm X and like Danny Glover or some shit. Uh. <laughs> I don't even know where the hell I'm at. But I see the street I want to go up. I want to go up St. Nick. I can literally see her apartment building. But there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I want to walk by. So I'm like, fuck! <laughs> I thought I was on like some reality show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. It was ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> so I'm thinking I gotta walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? And I was really, really scared, you know? But I'm also really, really white, you know? <laughs> like shockingly Caucasian. Yeah, like obviously. You know what I mean? Like if you're not ready for me, I can like surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> No, especially if you live up there. You've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical. Like a leprechaun came out of nowhere, you know? <laughs> Felt like I should have had like a little pot of gold. Like a rainbow behind me. Top of the morning to you, latte. <laughs> kind of dance my way past them. Kind of got the red hair thing going on, mm -hmm. too. But it's been going all right, you know? Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know? I relax. Sit down, you know, watch a hip-hop countdown. Hip-hop <laughs> <laughs> Pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But, you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes got to go through the same shit, though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl, right? Just that same awful feeling of just leaving your people behind, you know, just less uh, and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. <laughs> Fucking start off lean and you're all fucking cool. 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and 2 degrees. I don't like this shit. I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass. I don't see any rims. Oh, Lord. <laughs> no None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. 
Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you. Oh my gosh. She said, I, I don't see any rims. <laughs> I don't see any rims. Oh man. There's, there's so much grass, no tinted windows. I mean, that's how it it's is in the suburbs, that, I was you know? Say, it's funny you addressed that because it's really true. I think both people get uncomfortable when you have to go. I know. think so. Yeah, when you're walking in, you meet somebody's dad, and like, <laughs> you're black, and they're like, oh, Justin. Uh, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, hello. Yes, yeah. yes, it's me. Yeah, I know, I know. There's like Justin Bieber, just a Timberlake, but there's also like, uh, you know, like the Black Justins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tell me about it, Stacy. Stacy, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was. A good oh way. man. Oh, wait. But the, the beginning part. The outfits. That's it's kind of yes. it's kind of true because I'm telling you, in school, I would I one day I might have the same thing on. On a Monday and on a Friday, I might wear the same shirt. On Monday or like a Monday and then the next Monday. Mm -hmm. They're like, you only got five shirts. You know, you just wore that. I'm like, That's why I'm always paying attention. I'm like, what day did I wear that? I'm like, I'm not wearing it for another like three weeks. It's like ingrained. <laughs> yes, you, know, you got to think about that. You think it's about right. it now. Even People. at work. No one cares at work, but you still think about it. But yeah, but they might. <laughs> They're like, huh, didn't she have that dress on last week? I was going <laughs> to say, women's clothes. Ugh. And, and then, like, my ties, you know, if I wear the same tie or the same pair of work pants. Yeah, like those, someone those nice will blue notice. Ones I have, yeah. Somebody will be like, those are nice pants that you had on the other day. In the past four days. In the past four days. <laughs> Don't they pay you? That's what they say. And, you know, our job is, you know, it's not like anybody has to think about what they had on. They could just go back and look what, yeah, <laughs> what seriously. we had on. You can go back and see, literally. Like, you had day. that on. <laughs> It's hard out here, okay? It's hard out Listen. here. Listen. All right. Good time, crew. Good time, crew. We appreciate you for sticking with us. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, subscribe and all that. Oh, my gosh. Subscribe. No. Our you social know, media is down here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button because a lot of y'all ain't been doing that and it's upsetting stop, me. Stop, stop, It's stop, upsetting stop. me. Where's my hat? Where is my hat? No. And my backwards hat and my chain. Don't I need upset more. Him, I need okay. a more gangster with the hard R chain. I oh need, yeah, whoever said the hard I R. I need a thicker <laughs> chain so I can wear. No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 yeah. This chain is the perfect size. This is your amount of gangster. I like it. This is perfect. All right, good time, crew. See you next time. See you time. next time.